Fungal infections of this skin can be classified into three classes, the superficial fungal infections, deep fungal infections and systemic fungal infections. The superficial fungal infections includes dermatophyte infections, pityriasis versicolor, candidiasis. The deep fungal infections include mycetoma, sporotrichosis and chromoblastomycosis. And the systemic fungal infections include histoplasmosis. And in this video, we'll be talking about dermatophyte infections. Dermatophyte infections are the superficial fungal infections of the keratinized tissue. So this is the infection of the keratophilic fungus. These are usually caused by mainly three species, microsporum, trichophyton, and epidermophyton. And they usually target three types of tissues, skin, hair, and nails. The microsporum species usually infects skin, hair, living back, nails. The epidermophyton species infects skin and nails, leaving behind hair. The trichophyton species infects all of the three. Classification of dermatophytosis can be done according to the site of infection. Tinea capitis is dermatophytosis of scalp and associated hair. Tinea barbie is infection of beard region. Tinea cruris, the groin areas. Tinea corporis is infection of neck, upper and lower extremities and the trunk. Tinea pedis is infection of foot. Tinea manum of the palm areas and tinea ungium of the nail plate and nail bed. This is a prototype lesion of dermatophytosis. So here you can see an annular or a circular lesion with active margins. The margins can include vesicles, papules, postules and even scales. Whereas the central area is relatively clear and this is called central clearing. But in case of chronic diseases, there can be nodules, hyperpigmentation, or even lichenification in the center. Now let's start with the tinea capitis. Tinea capitis is fungal infection of the scalp and associated hairs. It is present in three patterns. The first one is non-inflammatory or non-scarring type of tinea capitis. There is partially bald areas with scaling at the periphery. The hairs can be plucked easily without any pain and this is one of the classical features of tinea capitis. This is usually caused by the species Trichophyton varicosum. And this type of tinea capitis might have black dots as shown here or grey patches as shown in this picture. The second type is inflammatory tinea capitis also known as Kirion. This type is usually seen in children. And the lesion here is described as boggy soiling with postulations. Here in this picture, you can appreciate the boggy soiling with few points of postulations. And there is also relative areas of baldness. The hairs can be easily plucked. And this type is also associated with regional lymphadenopathy. The species causing this is microsporum canis. The third type is favus. Here the lesion is described as foul smelling yellow cup shaped crust also known as a scutula. So in this picture you can appreciate this yellowish cup shaped crust. And the species causing this type is trichophyton shonlini. Lastly, we come to the treatment of tinea capitis. The overall drug of choice is griseofulvin. The drug of choice for trichophyton species is turbinafin and drug of choice for microsporum species is Griseofulvin. Here are other types of dermatophytosis. This is tinea facei with infection on the areas of face. This is tinea barbi infecting the beard region. Here is tinea manum infecting the palm areas. The tinea corporis affecting the trunk. This is tinea cruris which is also known as jock itch or dhobi itch and it is the infection of the groin areas. Tinea pedis is also known as athlete's foot and it's usually present between the interdigital space of third and fourth toe. Tinea ungium, also known as onychomycosis, is characterized by yellow discoloration of nail plate, thick nail plate and 
subungual hyperkeratosis. Lastly, we have something called as tinea incognito, where incognito means not recognizable. So the way to describe this is, let's say if someone has dermatophytosis and that person, instead of going to the doctor, tries to treat himself, where he buys a cream from a local pharmacy. And that cream is usually a steroid. And we know what steroids do. Steroids act as anti-inflammatory. So the result will be, there will be reduction in the itching sensation, the active margin of the lesion will be lost, the scaling will be diffused, and the lesion will be described as extensive and atypical. So the typical lesion, which is described as the annular lesion with active margin and central clearing will be lost, and it will be extensive with loss of active margin, the erythema will be diffused, and the scaling will also be diffused, with loss of central clearing. This type is described as steroid modified tinea. And since the typical lesion is lost, we cannot recognize the lesion, hence it is called as tinea incognito. Now coming on to the investigation part. The investigation of choice is KOH mount. And the reason we do KOH mount is because the potassium hydroxide will dissolve the keratin from this specimen and it will help us to better view the fungal filaments. And the findings of dermatophytosis is a branching hyphae, as shown in this picture right here. Now finally coming on to the treatment section. The general treatment of dermatophytosis is to maintain personal hygiene and to keep the area dry. Under topical therapies, we have azoles such as luliconazole, miconazole, clotrimazole, and ketoconazole, and also allylamines like torbinafin, butanafin, and morpholines like amarolfin. Under systemic therapy, we have oral torbinafin, oral griseofulvin, and oral itraconazole. What's really happening in the fungal cell membrane is that squalene is getting converted to lanosterol by the enzyme squalene epoxidase. Lanosterol is then getting converted to carbon-14 demethyl lanosterol by the enzyme 14-alpha demethylase. This is converted to fecosterol by the enzyme C14 reductase. Fecosterol is then converted to episterol by enzyme delta-87 isomerase. And lastly, episterol is converted to ergosterol which forms the cell membrane. And the reason I have highlighted these enzymes is because this enzyme, the squalene epoxidase, is inhibited by the drugs allylamines, which includes torbinafin. The 14-alpha demethylase enzyme is inhibited by azoles, such as luliconazole, miconazole, etc. And these two enzymes, the carbon-14 reductase and delta-8-7 isomerase, are inhibited by morpholines, which includes drugs such as amarolfin. So that's it for dermatophytosis. Thank you.